Hey everyone, thank you for checking out another video. This tutorial is going to be another generative art tutorial and I will be using processing, specifically the Python version. As always, I'll have a link in the description where you can download that. So in this video, we're going to be creating this code art image that you can see right here. If you've watched some of the other videos, you know some of the process that has to happen. We need a couple variables for things like the width and height of the image. So the first thing with processing is just to get a display window showing. So in the setup function, I'm going to call size, width, and height. And then if I run that, it's just this blank display or a blank canvas. So now we can start adding things. The first thing I always do is pick a background color. I usually go with a little bit lighter than black, so 30, 30, 30. So there's the background, and nothing about that will change in this video. We're just going to add these lines of code to it. A few of the things we're going to fill out just to show a line, a basic line. We'll say stroke weight, which is the thickness of the line. We'll say 12 stroke cap round. Then we need to just call stroke, which is the color. So just for this first test or the first few rounds of the testing, we're just going to leave it at the cyan color. So 0, 255, 255. And then just to make sure that we can draw a line, we'll specify the first point, the starting point, which we can say is 200, 500, and then 800, 500. So we're vertically kind of in the middle of the canvas and we're just drawing across. Being able to draw a line like this is really all we need. We just need to do it from the top to the bottom with segmented lines to represent lines of code. I love this project so much because it's it's very simple. I think my final code for the real project is less than 100 lines. I think it's like 90 lines of code. It's such a simple project, but it's so cool. So anyway, moving on. So line, we can get rid of this because we don't need it anymore. Like I said, we're going to leave these options the way they are right now and just use them for the time being. I'm not going to pull out all of the variables that you could in your own project, I'll leave that kind of to you and you'll see that at the end. But one of the things that I do want to show is code start equals height divided by 20. And then code end equals height minus height divided by 20. These numbers are fairly arbitrary, but we're going to use them to specify exactly how long we want the code to be. You can adjust that for whatever size your image is. So for i in range, let's say 30. We want to start at code start, and then we want to, oh, I guess another thing we need to do is we need to figure out the line separation. So we can say lines of code equals, we'll say 30, and then we have to say line sep equals code end minus code start. We'll put all that in parentheses, and then divide that by lines of code. So we'll replace this with lines of code. We're always going to draw it for now the same length, but I just want to make sure that we can actually draw the lines all the way down the canvas. So let's say y start equals code start. And then at the end of every line that we draw, we're going to update y start. Or I guess we could say, maybe we'll say line y, maybe that'll be better instead of start, because we are going to change this value. Line y plus equals line set. So we're just going to adjust the line y every time. So if we say line, we'll say x 50 line y, and then 600 line y. Let's just give that a try. So this is the most basic form. This is a great starting point. We're drawing lines of code, but they don't look very exciting right now because they're not indented and they're not segmented. So I'll say line segments equals random. And then this part is what's really kind of up to you. So let's say two and eight. So we're saying between two and eight segments. And then we step through those segments. And then we have to say segment length equals random. And th these are the pixel lengths. So let's say 10 and 
80 just to get something started. Line Y starts a code start. We're incrementing the line Y to draw the lines, but then each line is going to have a random number of segments and each segment is going to have a random length. As we're stepping through these segments, we just need to append the segment length to the X value. So we can go ahead and specify a line X. Line X equals, I think 50 was fine. We'll say line, line X, line Y, line X plus segment length, line Y. So we're just adding the segment length to the line Y. Let's run that. Oops. Float. Oh, that's right. Okay, so the random is generating a float value. So if we're going in a range, we need to just convert this to an int. Now, the only issue with this, you'll see it in a second, but I'll just run it. We're never updating the starting value of line X. So every time it draws a segment, each segment starts at the same position. That's why you can almost see this kind of thick line at the beginning. That's very interesting. But we want it to spread out over the... So all we have to do for that, after we draw the line, we'll say line X plus equals... Well, we'll say... Yeah, plus equals segment length plus any value that you want the segments to be separated by. So let's just say 20. Okay. Now, as always with loops, we need to remember to reset the line X back to the starting value at the beginning of every line. At the beginning of every line, we'll say line X equals 50. And then there you go. You basically have your segmented lines of code. Now we can clean the code up just a little bit if we want to. I'm probably not going to focus on that as much, but we're also going to add the indenting. So the way that I put that in is very simple, just like the rest of it. I say indent equals zero at the beginning. So we're saying there is no indent. And then each time I draw a line, I don't want to do it for the first line because if I did it for the first line, it would look weird if there's an indent at the very beginning. So I essentially say after this first line, if random one, that just generates a float value between zero and one. If it's less than, let's say 0.5, because we definitely want it to indent now for testing. And indent is less than five. We'll give it a max of five. This will make sense in just a second. If random one is less than 0.5 and indent is less than five, indent plus equals one. And then, well, I guess let's just run this. Well, we can't really run it yet because we're not doing anything with the indent value. We will add the indent at the beginning of resetting the line X. So we'll say plus indent times 50. So if I run this, it's indenting, it looks great. Now we just need to add a way for it to lose the indents and kind of come back to, you know, this is a essentially a representation of just a single function, which is pretty cool. It just keeps indenting, but we want to bring it back. So we basically do the exact same thing. And we say if random one is less than, let's say 0.5 again, and indent is greater than zero, indent. So there you go. You can see we indent and then there are spots where we just kind of go back, go back, and then go back. If we decrease the indent chance and leave the, I guess unindenting, is unindenting a thing? Then there won't be much indenting because almost every time that we indent, we'll unindent. So you could kind of split this up and make sure that maybe if we do indent, let's just say, if we do indent, we want to do it. And if we don't, then we can unindent. So we've got a lot working already. Now I think we should just work on the color, which is going to be one of the most simple parts of all of this. We just want to randomize the stroke color before every line to begin with. The color randomization that I usually use is very simple, random. 50, 200. I just generate a value between 50 and 200 for every color. I 
I'm trying to avoid the extremes on either end of the spectrum. Now we have a different color for every line. I think that looks fantastic already and you could stop here and it would be a great project. There are a couple other things I want to add. Primarily, I don't want the color to be the same for the entire line because I don't think that represents real code syntax. It's usually varied. So if we pull this, the stroke, into the line segments, we'll generate a color for every segment. But we don't really want that either. And I'll show you what that looks like. That's almost, it has too much variation for me. So we can do exactly what we did with the indent. We'll say if random one is less than 0.3, then we want to update this. We do need to make sure we have a color set at the beginning, but I guess we can leave that as, did I delete the, I guess I did. So we'll just put this at the very beginning. Now we have a random color change setting. So now you can have lines of code that have different colors. See this, this block here remains the same color the entire time. You could also add something, I guess, where you're sticking with a color for a while on each line, but every time you go to a new line, you're guaranteed to start over with a new color. You could do that. Overall though, I think this looks pretty good. The last thing that I will mention is that there need to be line breaks. This isn't the prettiest way to do this. And that kind of follows the theme of almost all of my tutorials. What I did is I just said, if not random one less than, let's say 0.5, just to get something working, and indent is zero, or equals to zero either way, whatever you want to do. And then we'll take all of this and we'll indent it inside of this block. So if I run this, oops, I left off a of parentheses. If I run this, now we've got these line breaks. We've actually got a lot of line breaks because it's such a high percentage, 0.5, but if we bring it down, now there's a little bit more natural line breaks. Okay, so this is probably a good point then. So you have this code. If you've been working along with it, hopefully it was fun. I'm going to pull over my project now, and I'll just go over kind of how I pulled out all the variables and show you some of the differences. So this is my project. I've got it titled this code art, and this is a code that you can actually find in the repository that will be linked in the description. So you saw all of these things being used in our code. I just didn't have them pulled out as variables. This just makes it a little bit easier for people that aren't willing to just dive into the code. They can just come to the top, change a few values, and then run the code and see the changes represented. The other thing that I've added, oh, I also have a change chance. I do have this random colors boolean. So if I set that to false, it will just use this color palette that I've specified. So if I run this as false, there's only gonna be two colors because those are the only two colors I have in this color palette. It's basically just a way for people, you know, you can set your own color palette, which I think is cool. I did make a function for setting the random color. I also made a function for grabbing a random color from the color palette. But other than that, I think most of the things are the same. If random colors is true, then it will set a random color, else set palette color. You saw most of this. I've still got this kind of hacky way of skipping if it is a line break. And then, as always, I try to save the examples that I've created. I usually just throw them in an examples folder, and I run this little thing here that generates a random value in a range of 10,000 cast it to an int and then cast it to a string so that it can be added to the file name. The video ran a lot longer than I expected it to, but I hope that you had fun. Thank you so much for watching. If you learned something new, remember to hit the subscribe button, leave me a comment about what you'd like to see in the future, and I will catch you